LinkedIn adopts protocol buffers for microservice integration and reduces latency up to 60%. They must have had J Diesel before this because that seems a lot. LinkedIn adopted protocol buffers for exchanging data between microservices more efficiently across its platform and integrated it with Restly, their open source REST framework. After the company-wide rollout, they reduced latency up to 60% and improved resource utilization at the same time. For those that don't know, it takes a lot to uh, decode JSON, and the harder part about JSON is that it actually creates a lot of garbage along the way. But something that people don't talk a lot about when it comes to protobufs is that protobufs are a greedy algorithm, or not a greedy algorithm. They are a, parse, a, a full parse upfront required algorithm. And so they are also, they're not like a giant performance win. They're definitely a performance win. There's definitely an over the wire save there's definitely some some things there's a, a lot less reading of data right when you have a lot of keys and a lot of big keys it still costs a lot to do that but to be able to have a non-json or non-protocol buffer uh thing you can really have some save time but again you have to really fully know your data format once you take the next leap right the day the the trade-offs become real at that point and you can save a lot of money if you have a lot of traffic but the trade-offs become real and it does become a lot harder LinkedIn, uh, the LinkedIn platform employees. By the way, I hate LinkedIn. Uh, uh, but it's, it, dude, the worst part is LinkedIn's kind of necessary. If you don't have a job yet and you're trying to get a break into the software industry, get a LinkedIn. But man, don't, don't LinkedIn do suck. Uh, the LinkedIn platform employs a microservices architecture. And for years now, Jason has been the, uh, used as the serialization format for over 50,000 API endpoints. What? 50,000? The internet was a mistake. <laughs> To help their teams build consistent interactions between services, the company created a Java framework called Restly, which became open source. The framework helped create servers and clients that use REST-style communication and abstracts away many of the abstra uh, aspects of data exchange. So pretty much gRPC, uh, including network serialization or serv uh, server discovery. Oh, service discovery. Interesting. They put that in there. Uh, it primarily supports uh, Java and Python, but can also work with Scala, Kotlin, JavaScript, these nuts, and Go. Okay. Zookeeper. Discover, announce, zookeeper, uh, data control flows. Okay, very cool. So you have this whole like client request builder. Okay, we got a little builder pattern, do all this, get all this stuff, bam, 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 bam. Cool. Uh, JSON is the default serialization format in Restly and has been selected due to its wide language support and being human readable. You know, it's very bizarre that in this day and age, we still have human readable as like a format required for data exchange. It just feels weird. I feel like there should have, there, I feel like something else should have happened by now. Galactus. Oh, is this where Galactus comes from? But I heard Galactus still can't get. It's still not ready. Uh, the last property, however beneficial, uh, however beneficial, introduces problem with performance. Yeah, and particular and particularly latency point of view. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, these two engineers at LinkedIn uh, shared challenges with using JSON inter-service communication. Yeah, you also types are really sucky. If you have different languages, it's really sucky. I actually really do prefer protobufs for for a lot of this. I think that. The world would have been a lot better place if we would have leaned into something like protobufs. Maybe protobufs ain't it, but still, it would have been really great. Because the thing about it is that you get language-independent typing, which I think is just really important. That way, if you use Go and the front end uses JavaScript, you share types. I know Captain Proto is like a really good version of it because Captain Proto, if I'm not mistaken, is a uh, a non-full parse required uh um, format, which is like super important. Typed messages are super important. I'm, I'm totally on type, uh, typed messages. And I really like the idea of like better performance. And so if I don't have to drop readable format and I can have good performance, it's beautiful. Cause remember with protobufs, you can flip the switch and send JSON. Remember that. So you can just do fully readable format and then flip it back and have it the non readable format. That's just more efficient for computers in general. You know what I mean? The amount of energy uh, being wasted on JSON could par uh, power country. You're actually pro you're you're probably not wrong. Uh, the team has been considering alternatives to JSON, looking for compact payload size and high serialization efficiency to reduce latency and increase throughput. They also didn't want the uh, to limit the number of supported languages uh, language stacks and enable uh, gradual migrations by integrating the new serialization mechanism into Restly. Finally, after a comprehensive review, they decided to go with protocol buffers. Okay, uh, which scored the highest based on the defined criteria. Interesting. I wonder if they did Captain Proto or not. Uh, the main difficulty around integrating protocol buffers into Restly was the dynamic schema generated based on the framework's custom schema definition system. Yikes. PDL for probably going to regret this. 
Uh, the solution involved generating a symbol table that was used to generate protocol buffers uh, schema, schema definitions. Wow. Double generation uh, dynamically. But the method for delivering symbol tables varied depending on the type of client. Yikes. Backend clients fetched and cached symbol tables on demand, while web and mobile client app symbol tables are generated at build time and include as version dependencies. You should always version. Ver if your very first field of every protocol buffer should be a version. All right. After changes to the framework uh, were rolled out, the team gradually reconfigured the clients to enable proto protobuffs instead of JSON using HTTP headers. The result of the protocol buffer adoption was an average increase in throughput by 6.52% in responses and 1.77% for requests. The team also observed uh, up to a 60% latency reduction for large payloads. Like people don't realize how important this is. You got to remember when you can do when when you're serving millions upon millions upon millions of people a billion requests a day when you can have a, sh a machine become more efficient like the, the amount of money you save a year becomes really important i know most people's projects have no users i'm sorry you're no user application you probably don't need it just like i don't think you need to plan for every single thing you have to be a microservice and a no user application right you can start simple i get it i'm on your team but you know at some point making the change can can mean a lot of things you know uh, based on the learnings from the protocol buffers rollout, the team is planning uh, uh, to follow up with a migration from RESTly to gRPC. That's a good choice. I like this, which also uses because it also has uh, uh, it also like the 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 TypeScript version comes with async iterators. Like nice gRPC is really really nice to use. Honestly, I've been loving using gRPC and using it within my applications lately. It's been really good. It's super simple to use. Uh, I, I use it to just talk to the endpoints. It's it's honestly just really nice. You know, it's really, really nice. Uh, I'm shockingly liking it. I didn't think I was going to like it that much. I am. Uh, which uses protocol buffers, but additionally supports streaming and has a large community behind it. Yeah, the streaming is really cool. So I use it for live data acquisition. Um, I, I We live stream out data. And so that way I can display it to the user. And I'm even working right, right when I get done with this, I'm literally working on visualization of streaming data from gRPC endpoints into into it pretty fun pretty cool stuff really appreciate it I really like it this is a great thing and i think people just you know it's shocking how little people how little engineers know that there's alternatives to json other than xml like when you say if you go on the internet and you go like this what uh what can you use other than json most of the answers will be xml it's just surprising see i didn't know about it uh, this until today yeah there's like there's an entire world that exists remember the world could never afford json until like the the 2000s you know like we didn't have computers powerful enough to do that i know you guys are a bunch of trolls and you're going to be saying like proto buffs xml xml csv <laughs> i like that last one csv that's the format you're looking for um the name you should probably consider using uh proto buffs uh, they're pretty cool and grpc is actually pretty cool I, I i didn't think i was gonna love grpcs but i am definitely loving grpcs a lot a lot more and so you know maybe you should consider it uh you know giving it a try a gen 